All right, get back where we just left off. I had made a mistake on the starting torque. It should be 200% on the split phase and uh, in comparison to the shaded pole. Uh, like I said, using the shaded pole as a baseline, we compare the motors of the same likeness. When, when you use a split phase in that application, you have a starting torque that's double the power of the shaded, shaded pole. When I add a capacitor, it will bring it to about 300% of the starting torque. In other words, about three times of what a shaded pole of the same thing would be. All right, which brings us into a different motor, different configuration. These are real good for uh, applications that you would need a high starting torque. But we don't always have to have that high of a starting torque, especially when we want to look at some efficiency. So let's look at what's called a PSC motor. Okay, PSC stands for Permanent Split Capacitor. Now this device right here is a start capacitor. We cannot leave this start capacitor and start winding in the circuit very long. If we do, we're going to over overheat the motor. Okay? But if we set it up as a PSC, we can have somewhat of both worlds, the, the beauty of both worlds here. Not entirely, but pretty much a better situation. We will ha again have our start winding and our run winding as so. But this time, we put a run capacitor in series with the start winding and leave it on all the time. That's the reason it's called a permanent split capacitor motor. Okay. Now, this does a little something that helps us out with the efficiency of it too. This would be your neutral or your L2. This is your L1. You remember my drawing that showed the sine wave or the picture of electricity? Think about this. Compare this to, to going down the road in the automobile. I start off. I accelerate until I reach my top speed. I deaccelerate until I stop again. I start off, reach my top speed, stop again. Start off. That's what these devices are doing on the AC. Must be going through downtown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop go. Yeah, man. We're on 75. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> 400, you ain't going nowhere. That's right. <laughs> All right. What's that do to my mileage? Yeah. Right? Because you're having to start, go, start, go, right. start, go, versus start and, and the run kick in and it just keeping it right. at, at one steady pace. What if I could, when the motor's running, what if I could never stop? Stop. Always have some gas. power. Okay. So by having the capacitor in series with the start winding, we cause a phase change. We cause the start winding to see this. Okay? We're now in a situation that we always have some power being delivered to that motor. Even when the power coming in stops, the capacitor continues to add the power in there. Where's that power come from? Well, that capacitor charged up during this time now is decharging here. Okay? But we don't stop the motor. So now, might say that we're not we're, we're not staying steady, but we're coasting through those lights. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, that way we can actually increase the efficiency of the motor. All right, now the motor has to be built to be able to do this. We just don't take any motor and go out and say, hey, we're going to make one of these or one of these out of them. Okay, the motor's got to be built for that application. All right, now. That brings us up to a different type of motor. We, how about if we take the beauty of this one and the starting capabilities of this one, by the way, this is going to be a 200% starting capacity. All right, we take those two and we go with a CSCR. 
That is going to be one that has both the start capacitor and a run capacitor in series you see that? One of those capacitors drops out. That's the start capacitor on a centrifugal switch in this special case. The other one has the run capacitor which stays in there. It takes the efficiency of the PVC or PSC and the starting capacitor of the CR. It's going to be closed. Centrifugal switch is going to be closed when the motor's not running. Okay? It opens after it starts. Now, I don't have one of those motors out here to show you, but if you will, it's going to be a motor that would look very similar to this one with the start capacitor, but it would also have a run capacitor. Okay? Now, that brings us up to another kind of motor, which is common in the industrial and light commer or, or commercial area. You won't see this in most residents. It's just, uh, like I say, it's going to be a commercial and industrial. Three phase. Okay, three phase motors. I'm going to get over here on this other board over here and talk about the three phase. The three phase, if you were to look at the sine wave coming in, and you measured all three legs, you would have one that looked like that, that would be your single phase. 120 degrees later, you would have another phase coming in. 120 degrees later, and this is not drawn right because I would not have this opening here, but you can see if you were looking at the circle, the generator would have a winding here, a winding here, and a winding here, whereas a single phase generator would have winding such as so. Okay, or okay. You you uh that's I don't want to get too deep into that, but that's the way it's that's the way it's uh developed. The three phase power is developed. Like I said, that drawing right there stinks. But did you notice something about that drawing? There was never a dead spot in it. Something was always moving in it. Well what's the wiring diagram of a three-phase motor look like. There's your three windings. That's a simple three-phase motor. T1, T2, and T3. I've been asked, if not one time, a hundred times, how do I know how to wire that motor up? If it's single phase, the color code normally is going to be white, is going to be the neutral, or L2, the black is going to be the L1, normal. If you have a capacitor, a brown lead. If you have multi speeds, most of the time the black is going to be the high speed, a red lead is going to be the low speed, a blue lead is usually going to be a medium speed. Don't rely on that. How do you know how to wire one up? Look at the wiring diagram that is on the motor. Everybody doesn't go by the same color codes, so never trust that. But three phase is an industrial standard that when you have three phase, they're going to be marked as such. If you have a multi voltage motor, that is a motor that can be used in more than one application, why would you need that? Let's say, let's talk about stock. If I'm stocking something and I can get one item to work in more than one application, that's a whole lot better than having to have two motors, right? If I can put one motor on the shelf and sell it to two different applications, then that's better than having that stock increase double. So, you'll see this in the field. 
a multi-voltage motor or dual voltage motor, I should say. Okay, now I am drawing the windings of a dual voltage motor and I'm going to show you how the windings are marked. This is, like I say, a pretty much of an industrial standard. I start off with T1, T2, T3. Y'all notice any pattern I'm doing? T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, and T9. Did you notice the pattern? Clockwise. And I kept going towards the yeah. Okay. Now, how do I wire it up? Well, let's say that this motor is a uh, 240, 480 volt application motor. It won't, would only be one or the other. You can't have it both. But you have to wire it for one or the other. If I'm going to wire it for the higher voltage, I connect T7 and T4 together. I connect T8 and T5 together. I connect T9 and T6 together. Then I put my leads coming in. L1 would go to T1. L2 would go to T2. L3 would go to T3. If I need to reverse that motor, I swap any two of these incoming leads. It will change the rotation. Now, that was easy enough. 